I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed their Mabari the flesh of the vanquished. Well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. Oh, like you can tell the difference. For all you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. It's not cannibalism if he's eating it, you know. Yes. Indeed. Yes. Yes. Indeed, yes. I bring word, sire. There are demands from the Banorn that you step down from the Regency. They are said to be gathering their forces, as are your allies. It appears it will be civil war after all, despite the Darkspawn. Pity. I also have an interesting report. There seem to be Grey Wardens who survived Ostagar. How, I don't know but they will act against you. I have arranged for a, a solution with your leave. The Antivan Crows send their regards. An assassin? Against Grey Wardens, we will need the very best. <laughs> <laughs> and the most expensive. Just get it done.
very well. shall be done. Stop right there, outsider. The Dalish have camped in this spot. I suggest you go elsewhere, and quickly. I find that hard to believe. What business could we Dalish possibly have with a group like yours? A Grey Warden? How do I know you're telling the truth? I suppose that a lie wouldn't gain you much benefit. I shall bring you to the Keeper. In the camp, I suggest you keep your hands to yourself, and remember that our arrows are still trained on you. Follow me. Hmm. I see we have guests. Who are these strangers, Mithra? I have precious little patience and less time to spend on outsiders today. This one claims to be a Grey Warden and wishes to speak with the clan. I thought it best to leave the decision to you. That was wise of you. Masirinus Mithra, you may return to your post. Manuvinen Keeper. Now, allow me to introduce myself. I am Zathrian, the Keeper of this clan. Its guide and preserver of our ancient lore. And you are? Manners from a Shemlin. Interesting. What might be your mission here? Have you come to spread news of the Blight? I had already sensed the corruption spreading in the South. The existence of the Blight is not news to me. I would have taken the clan north by now, had we the ability to move. Sadly, as you can see, we do not. Yes, it seems like you've had your own troubles. What are the odds? I imagine you are here regarding the treaty we signed centuries ago. Unfortunately, we may not be able to live up to the promise we made. This will require some explanation. Please, follow me. The clan came to the Brazilian forest one month ago as is our custom when we enter this part of Ferelden. We are always wary of the dangers in the forest, but we did not expect the werewolves would be lying in wait for us. They ambushed us, and though we drove the beasts back, much damage was done. Many of our warriors lie dying as we speak. Even with all our magic and healing skill, we will eventually be forced to slay our brethren to prevent them from becoming beasts. The Blight's evil must be stopped. But we are in no position to uphold our obligations. I am truly sorry.
They are savage and unrelenting. They need no reason to attack anyone. What is curious, however, is the ambush. We expect werewolves to be no more cunning than a rabid wolf. The ambush suggests a level of intelligence we've never seen before. I doubt that. The very curse that is in their blood fills them with an unreasoning rage that precludes any true thought. The affliction is a curse that runs rampant in their blood, bringing great agony and then ultimately either death or a transformation into something monstrous. The only thing that could help them must come from the source of the curse itself. And that, that would be no trivial task to retrieve. Within the Brazilian forest dwells a great wolf. We call him Witherfang. It was within him that the curse originated, and through his blood that it has been spread. If he is killed and his heart brought to me, perhaps I could destroy the curse. But this task has proven too dangerous for us. I sent some hunters into the forest a week ago, but they have not returned. I cannot risk any more of my clan. There is no guarantee that this will work, as I suspect. But it's the only hope we have left. I must warn you that more than werewolves lurk in the Brazilian forest. It has a history full of carnage and murder, you see. Where there is so much death, the veil separating the spirit realm from our own becomes thin, allowing spirits to possess things, living or dead. But if you can indeed help, then I wish you luck. Make them quick, if you please. I have much to do here. My apprentice Lanaya or Seyrel, the clan's storyteller, could provide you with answers just as easily. There is not much to say. It stemmed originally from Witherfang, but now any werewolf may infect someone with it. No. The ones from this forest, however, do. It is possible, but not guaranteed. The only way to protect against the curse is not to be bitten. You will know within a matter of days. You will begin to sweat and vomit, and most tellingly, your temper will become wild and uncontrollable. If that happens to you, you should seek out Witherfang even more swiftly. Your mission at that point will be rather personal. That is a long tale I do not have time to tell. Ask Sayrel about it if you wish. Go on then. I must return to caring for my people. Creator's speed on your way. I'm Darren Etitian, stranger. I am Athras. I hope the others have not been too harsh in their treatment of you. That is very generous of you. Most would assume we are unkind as a rule, and that is not the case. Especially not to a Grey Warden. But we have lost much. And it is easy to forget simple niceties at such a time. I understand you will search for the wolves in the Brazilian forest. I would join you, but Zathrian has forbidden me. 
None of us are happy about this situation, and I least of all. But I shouldn't speak too much about this, especially with an outsider. I am sure you have little interest in my problems. It's odd to talk so freely with a stranger, but perhaps you can help me. My wife, Denila, and I both fought the werewolves in the ambush. She was injured so gravely, the curse spread rapidly in her. Zathrian fought hard to ease her pain, but there was little he could do. And though he says that Denila is dead, he will not let me see her. Her body. I am beginning to believe she became a werewolf. And that it is being kept from me so I do not go chasing after her. If I could just know if Denila is alive or what happened to her, then I could be at peace. I have an amulet made by our craftsmen. It's not much, but I would be happy to give it to you in return for any news. As you say. Andera Natitian Grey Warden. My name is Lanaya. I am Zaprian's first, what you might call an apprentice, perhaps. I've been studying under the Keeper all my life. I am a bit curious of the outside world. Do you mind if I ask you a question or two? I hear the human cities are very large. Thousands upon thousands of souls all packed together in their houses. Is that true? How very loud that must be with everyone talking all at once. I try to imagine those of our people living in such a place, surrounded by walls of stone and indifference. It is a difficult thought. I suppose you have met many of my kind in your travels. My heart goes out to them. It is said that one day we will have a land of our own. We Dalish gather the ancient wisdom in preparation for this. When that day comes, all elves, even those who have forgotten, will reclaim their former glory. I have a question, if it's not too impolite to ask. Do your people regret what they did to ours? I see. That is difficult for our people to accept. Even if only some were in favor of what was done to us, the rest did nothing to stop it. A poet once wrote of them, before the fall of the Dales. Like dragons they fly, glory upon wings. Like dragons they savage, fearsome, pretty things. But you don't need me to quote poetry to you. Forgive me. Perhaps you have some questions of your own. I'm hardly anyone special, I assure you. If I seem different from the rest of my clan, it's only because I was born amongst humans. I came to the Dalish at a very young age, but I've always retained my curiosity about the world I came from. My parents were servants to a human merchant whose caravans plied the southern routes. One day, bandits killed him, and my parents both. I was the only survivor, just a young girl, and the bandits took me. I was their servant for several years. It was. The long years of reflection have allowed me to come to terms with it, to put them in perspective. I can only imagine what would have happened had the clan not saved me from them. I owe them my life for that, and more. The bandits killed a scout when the clan passed near their camp. When the clan discovered him, Zathrian came looking for his killers. He followed their tracks for almost a month, and when he finally caught up to us, he fell on the bandits like a terror. No one could stop him. I sat there, and I watched him attack them in a blur, and I reveled in every blow. When he saw me, the fury in his eyes turned to pity. He took me back to the clan, and I've been here ever since. It's possible I might have had some, maybe many. Zathrian offered to take me back, but I had no idea where I was from and I wanted to stay with a man who rescued me. The clan is my family. 
any others out there, it's best they believe that little girl died with her parents. For now, the clan is all I need. My old world could not have offered me all this, and the knowledge of a keeper as well. Perhaps one day, when I am keeper, I might inquire out of curiosity. I'm not sure what lies down that road except pain, however. I am not a keeper. I am Zathrian's first. Though because I was not born into the clan, becoming his first was very difficult. We Dalish have old traditions. The clans come from the ranks of the nobility that once ruled the Dales, you see. The keepers of those old clans have the strongest and purest blood that reaches back to the days of Arlathan. I had to compete against the other candidates for first, to be better than them in everything, simply because I was not of the old blood. I am. The ceremony where Zathrian anointed me as his first was the proudest day of my life. The clan has placed great trust in me. One day, I will lead them and be the one who secures our future. A keeper is, first and foremost, the leader of the clan. He decides where we go and when we shall move. He's also responsible for knowing the clan's ancient lore and passing it on to the others in the clan. Without a keeper, the clan's knowledge is lost forever, so the clan protects him like no other. They have reason. Since the days of Arlathan, my people have been either subjugated or homeless. It was our ancestral home long ago when the humans first came to these lands. We were free then and immortal. We did not know how to deal with the humans, and in the end, they turned their power against us and destroyed Arlathan. Our ancestors were enslaved, and our culture lost forever. Not to my knowledge. According to the old tales, the human mages sank our Lathan into the ground, crushing it beneath the rock. Yes, after a millennium of slavery, Andraste herself freed our people, she who is your maker's chosen. We worship the creators, as we always have. We give thanks to Andraste for her part in our freedom, but we do not worship her or her god. They died, but not of an aged body as other races do, not until the humans came. According to the legends, association with humans caused us to quicken, our blood sped, and we began to age. So we avoided them naturally. And then we were enslaved by them for a thousand years, and in so doing, we all were quickened permanently and our immortality destroyed. Or so the old tales say. In time and with seclusion, we Dalish have lengthy lifespans, and they will get longer. Zathrian himself has lived many centuries, though that is unusual even for us. Shemlin, we call them, quick children. I suppose it takes a certain arrogance to look upon another people as children, no? Perhaps we should be more heedful of our own role in Arlathan's loss. Even so, it was a bitter lesson to learn. One we are not grateful for. That was our second homeland. Our first was the great city of Arlathan. The Dales came when they were freed from enslavement. Elves everywhere journeyed hundreds and thousands of miles to the Dales, eager to start their lives anew. They called it the Long Walk. They reached the Dales and made it their own. And one day it was taken from us too, and you wonder why we are hostile. Aren't you? You're human. And to many of them, you represent the humiliations our people have suffered for generations. You may not have been personally responsible, but such feelings are not easily overruled by logic or fairness. I was not born here, so I see things differently from the others. Still, I do not blame them for what they feel. Perhaps this may change one day, but I believe the humans would have to take the first steps, if they are capable. Certainly. Nothing that you could not ask Zathrian himself. He is the keeper of this clan and has been for a very long time. He is also a very good man who has lost much. The Dalish are everything to him, and he would do anything to protect them. He lost his family a very long time ago. 
I don't know the story, but I understand the circumstances were horrific. As you wish. Darth Shirel. I never thought I'd ever set foot in a Dalish camp. I must say, I thought the Dalish would be much harder to find. Do you think this clan let us find them? How do they move these things through the forest? Do the trees just get out of their way or what? What are you doing? You've warped the wood completely. Did you leave it out in the rain? No, Master Ferrothorn. I, uh, I think I just used too much heat. You're not smelting ore like a Durganlan. This is living wood. It requires patience and delicate hands, not more heat. My actions bring me sorrow, Master Ferrothorn. And so they should. Truly the art will be lost to us forever at this rate. Throw away your dead wood and start anew, and I shall speak to our guest. Now then, please forgive my distraction, stranger. Is there something that you need? I'm the clan's craftsmaster. It's my responsibility to learn what I can of the ancient elven arts of shaping wood and ore. In truth, we Dalish know little of the art compared to what we once did. And even what we know has taken us many lifetimes to achieve. There is wood that, if treated properly, is as hard as steel, but far lighter. It grows only in this forest, Ironbark. The Keeper has forbidden us from entering the forest to collect the wood. This means I cannot make our finest crafts for years to come. I would be hesitant to ask it of you, but if you should come across Ironbark, I suppose there would be no harm in gathering some. It is blue and very distinctive. You can only harvest the bark which has fallen off the tree from age. Now, if you find some, bring it to me, and I will craft it for you. That would please me, so long as our hunters come first. I am no merchant, but let us trade. Perhaps there's something here which will be of value to you. Allow me. I could do that for you. We few wanderers greet you, Shemlin. We understand you are venturing into the haunted forest to save our brethren. I suspect your efforts may be in vain. An entire group of our hunters went into the forest to do as you intend, and they have not returned. An outsider to the rescue, but of course. What were we doing trying to solve our own problems? Nothing will help us now, least of all the meddling of an outsider. You are being most unkind, Cyril. 
Would you refuse our hunter's help simply because of the hand that offered it? <sighs> you shame me, Lethalan. I have allowed my bitterness to cloud my better judgment. Forgive me, Grey Warden. It is most difficult to forget the lessons these Shemlin have taught us. Perhaps I can yet make amends. Stay while I spin a tale for our children. And then I will tell you of the forest if you desire. Come and join us then, all of you. Now, what say we tell the story of the fall of the Dales? Which of you children knows that best? I... I think I do. Yes? Then come, child. Oh, don't be frightened of the outsiders. Now, where do you suppose such a tale should begin? When we were slaves? Yes. Long ago, our people were slaves to an empire the Shemlin had built on the darkest magic. They took away our history and our language and left us nothing. And then that empire fell. We were freed. Because Andraste came with her army, and Chartan joined her. Yes. Andraste, the Shemlin prophet, came out of the south and challenged the Tevinter Imperium. Our ancestor, Chartan, fought at her side. And when the rebellion came to an end, we were given a new homeland in the west, the Dales. We began to rebuild the culture and history we had lost in our years of slavery. We worshipped the creators, and made the Dales our home. Perhaps you know what happened next, stranger. Do you know what happened to the Dales? We started the war, did we? And you, child, what do you believe happened to the Dales? The Shemlin wouldn't let us be. Indeed. They resented that we would not worship their maker. And they resented our ways because they were so different from their own. The Shemlin nations grew cold towards the Dales. They called us blasphemers and tyrants and declared war upon us. A great crusade. And which is worse? The actions of those who believed they were right the inaction of those who knew they were wrong. Oh, I am certain we played a part in our downfall. We believed that the Shemlin would not revoke their prophet's gift so lightly. We were wrong. They took our lands, forcing us to abandon our gods and live as beggars in Shemlin cities. But there were those of us who refused to abandon our ways. They emblazoned the symbols of the creators upon their flesh and vowed to keep their ancient law alive. That's us. That's the Dalish. Indeed, child. We chose to wander, homeless, rather than be ruled by the Shemlin. And all our clans wander alone until the day we have a homeland once more. Then we bring the old ways back to our people, because they have forgotten it all. For we are the Dalish, the keepers of the lost law. The walkers of the lonely path. We are the Elvenan, and never again shall we submit. And that is the tale of the Dales, stranger. Thank you for allowing us to tell it to you. Perhaps one day, you will tell us a tale of your people. A day when you are not guest and stranger, but savior. Now, as I said I would, I can tell you what I know of the Brazilian forest. Do you wish to hear it? Our legends say that before the Shemlin came, the Brazilian forest was a place of our ancestors that predated even our oldest homeland. The people of the Imperium came here and gave the forest its name. If they found traces of our ancestors, we cannot say. If they did, those elves were slain or enslaved. We know only that a great many battles were fought here. These trees grow upon the graves of those who fell, Shemlin and elves both. Indeed. Very wise of you. There was so much death that the veil into the beyond was torn. The Shemlin know the beyond as the Fade, the place of dreams and spirits. When the veil is torn, spirits pass into our world freely. The legends say that 
One great spirit possessed the wolf that became Witherfang, who passed its curse of rage onto men and created werewolves. So Zathrian insists. He says that Witherfang does not age as the werewolves do. Witherfang is as much spirit as it is beast, and thus it is immortal. Perhaps it cannot even be slain. At the very least, it is old and powerful, much as Zathrian himself. The forest is said to be haunted. Spirits possess the trees, the wolves, even the bodies of the dead. They yearn for true life, you see. No one knows. When the Shemlin lived in these parts, the curse would spread anew to a few of them with each passing year. They would run off into the forest, never to be seen again. Eventually, all the Shemlin left. One assumes the werewolves survive by passing their curse to their offspring. They have had no new blood. Until now, that is. It is said that one or two have turned already, though the Keeper denies it. As for the rest, they will either die or turn, unless they are killed out of mercy. I would rather die than become a ravening soulless beast, wouldn't you? Who can say what value the Imperium placed on this land? And how many elves died here in slavery? Even the barbarians who came to overthrow the Imperium fought and died on this soil. One last warning. The forest is like a thing alive. It changes as it wills, closing paths behind you and opening up new ones. Too many have become lost within, unable to find their way out. Were I you, I would endeavor not to make the forest my enemy. Darth Shirol. I'm sorry, but I must attend to our ailing fallen. And Darren Atitian, outsider. I am Gaina. Is there something you need from me? I am not sure what I can tell you, but I shall try. Zathrian? He has been our keeper since long before my parents' parents were born. What could you wish to know about him? I don't know. Very old. It is said that Zathrian may be one of the first to become as our ancestors were long ago, immortal. We... we all live longer than the Flat Ears, the elves who live with humans. The Keepers even more so because of their knowledge of the old ways. Why Zathrian differs from the others, I do not know. Perhaps he has been blessed by the Creators. Of course! Does your maker need to come down from the heavens and speak out loud for you to believe in him? There is little harm in my belief that our own gods watch over us from the heavens, full of hope for our future. What is that? You would be best to speak to Seyrel. He is our storyteller and knows far more of such tales. You should speak to Lanaya. She's the Keepers first and knows much of such questions. Then may the creators bring you fortune. Uh, hello?
Uh, of course. I'm, I'm very sorry. It's just that we don't get many visitors. Uh, like you, I mean. Of your kind. Oh, of course. It's just that they don't... I mean, you don't... Oh, I should start over. I am Kamen, a hunter-apprentice. Though I wish I could become a real hunter. I shouldn't be talking about this to an outsider. You wouldn't understand. I suppose there's no harm in it. It's not like you can help me. I've been an apprentice for too long. To become a true hunter, I must bring back the pelt of a beast I killed myself. A boar or a wolf or something. I wanted to hunt in the forest, but we're forbidden to enter because of the attack. But the real problem is Gaina. She's my heart's desire. I have asked for her hand, but she cruelly refuses it. She will not bond with an apprentice, she says, and calls me a child. I am no child. If I was a hunter, I could prove it, but I cannot hunt and... And Gaina will never bond with me. I feel so helpless. I shouldn't have brought it up. Just leave me to my misery. I don't think there's anything I can tell you. My clanmates in the camp would be better at that. Oh, what do you want now? I told you everything already. You think I haven't thought about this? There's nothing I can do. I suppose you could, but what good would that do? The situation hasn't changed. Really? I... I'm willing to try anything. Siranas. Oh, Ma Siranas. I will pray to the goddess of love that you are successful. Greetings once again. You spoke to him? What did he say? Oh. I don't expect an outsider to understand our ways, but I just can't bond with Kamen. He's been a hunter apprentice for over two years now, and he's yet to slay a proper beast. Each time he's tried, something has gone wrong. Perhaps the creators do not wish us to bond. I cannot bond with an apprentice hunter, can I? But what if he never becomes a proper hunter? What will become of our family? Oh, you are right! I have made poor Kamen miserable. No wonder he cannot complete his hunt. Masiranas, thank you. You have helped me put this into perspective. I will go and speak to Kamen. Kamen, I have been a fool. Gaina? Wh what do you mean? Have you changed your mind? I have. The outsider has helped me to see that I was wrong. I have made you miserable, and I should not have. But what about my hunt? Oh, I don't care about that. I know you will pass your hunt in time, and we will be happy. Us and our children. Thank you, Gaina. You've made me a happy man. I feel blessed by the gods today. We are both very grateful for the part you've played in bringing us together. How marvelous you are. I am so happy. This is so wonderful. Young love allowed to flourish. Here, take this. It's been in my family for a very long time, but I hope it plays some part in your battle against the Darkspawn. It's the very least we could do.
Those Hala certainly are proud and beautiful. It's as though they realize how special they are. I hear only the Danish can control the Hala. They listen to no one else. There are places where those horns bring huge prices. Can cure diseases, so they say. Who comes? Oh, I beg your pardon, stranger. I was so busy attending to the Hala, I did not hear your approach. My name is Alora. I am the master herder in charge of caring for the Hala. Not as exciting as being a Grey Warden, but the Hala are vital to us. Not as much as I assumed you thought my task boring in comparison. Am I wrong? You are kind to say so, but it is not quite on the same level as saving the lands from the spread of shadow, I am sure. In truth, my place as the Master Herder is a small one. But one I am quite satisfied with. Would that we could all find such peace with our lot in life. They are the noble beasts that pull our Aravel, what humans call land ships. They are our companions and our guides. I have seen your horses. The relationship is different, as is the purpose. We ride the Hala, but never with reins or a saddle. It is the Hala who decide where to lead us, and our privilege that they take our Aravel with them. In return, it's the herder's job to speak to the Hala and care for their needs. It's a bond of friendship, and not servitude. I fear she may have been bitten during the werewolf attack. I have tried speaking with her, but she is too agitated for me to understand. The curse would not affect her as it would us, but it would still be lethal. And it may prove contagious to the other Hala as well. I can find no wound on her, but if she's truly ill, then... Then I will have to put her out of her misery, for her sake as well as that of the others. I don't know. Do you have any skills that might help her? If you do, I would be grateful. She's calming down. That's it, love. Be calm. Tell me what troubles you. Ah, I see. It is her life mate who is sick, not her. He was bitten on the leg during the attack, and she fears greatly for him. I did not realize another Hala was injured. This will allow me to prevent the sickness from spreading to the entire herd. Masiranus, thank you. You have done my clan a great boon this day. I will always be grateful for your help. Thank <laughs> you.